you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17. For the past, this is the fifth week of our Save to Serve series. Have you enjoyed this series, Save to Serve? Amen. All right. Have you enjoyed this series, Save to Serve? Amen. I'm telling you, man, God is doing some amazing things through the Word of God, through the ministry of His Word. You know, we've talked about so much up to this point. You know, Pastor Ben came in and um, talked about how God, um, does God have favorites? And then, you know, Chris came in last Sunday and talked about serve more, say, say, say less, which is amazing. Both of those messages were amazing. So glad they take after their mom. Praise the Lord. And um, that was a joke that didn't go over very well, but that's all right. Look at verse number 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. This is the text that we're taking. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Hallelujah. How many saved people are in the house today? Anybody glad that you're going to heaven and not hell? Aren't you glad that the past is gone? A new life has begun. Let me say this, no matter how long you've been a Christian, his mercies are new every day. And whenever you receive something new, you get excited about it. Amen. I said when you receive something new, you get excited about it. How many ladies like to get a new dress, new clothes? Do you get excited about something new that you get to wear? Amen. Are you even more excited when it's on sale? Oh, come on now. Now I'm talking your language. And the husbands are excited about that too. Amen. Now for guys, we're kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum. We like maybe not necessarily clothes, but we like new tools. We like new things that makes us better, that makes us more successful. We like new things too. So whenever something new comes across our path, we get excited about it. It's the same way with Christianity. We should always be excited about being saved. Amen. I said we should always be excited about being saved. Amen. Amen. Verse number 18. Now all things are of God. Now notice this. Who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. Notice this. And has given us the ministry of reconciliation. If you remember, we broke this down. This word ministry means to serve. Actually, it means to serve one another. And then you break down reconciliation means the, uh, it means restoration or bringing restoration to people. Basically, if you could If you could put Christianity into a nutshell, it basically is simply this. We serve others to bring restoration to them or for them for Jesus Christ. I mean, the whole reason why we do what we do is to see people restored into relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's a ministry that we've been given by, it's been given to us by Jesus Christ. And we do that through serving one another. Verse 19, that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Every one of us here has a call to serve one another. It's a part of our spiritual DNA. It's a part of who we are. We're not here to be served. We're here to serve others. That's a part of being a Christian. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I love to serve you. Come on, say with like enthusiasm. Say, I love to serve you. Amen. Now, interesting in the world, it's almost like flipping the coin. It's like, no, you're here to serve me. I got this education. I got this. I got this. I got this. And I deserve this because of this and this and this. I mean, God is the total opposite of that. Just because we have education and all that doesn't mean that we demand to be served. That's a worldly way of looking at it. In God's way of looking at things, we're here to serve others regardless of where we come from, regardless of our education, regardless of our financial means, and regardless of where we've been and all that. No, we choose to serve others because it's a part of our spiritual DNA. It's a part of who God has created us to be. We're not only saved, glad we're going to heaven, but we're saved with a call. We're saved with a purpose. We're saved with a destiny. And that salvation is included with service. Serving others. Our purpose is to serve one another. Turn to Galatians chapter 15, verse number 13. Galatians, Galatians chapter 15, verse 13. Not only were we saved, but we were given a purpose, a destiny, and that is to serve others. Galatians chapter 15, Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. Sorry. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty, and only do 
Not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Now I'm going to give you some heavy revy today. Check this out. One of the ways that you put your flesh under is by serving others. Let me say that again. One of the ways that we put our flesh under is by serving others. Notice this what the book of Galatians says. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. How many believe that you're set free? Every one of us, Jesus has set us free. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. But not, but it goes on and says, only do not use that liberty as an opportunity of the flesh. We were saved. We were set free. We've been called, destined to serve. But don't allow that to give us an opportunity for the flesh. In fact, the scripture goes on and says, but through love, serve one another. How do you put the flesh under? Make the decision to serve one another. Whenever you're having a flesh fit, when you're upset and you're uptight, instead of giving somebody a piece of your mind, serve them. Instead of retaliating after something's been put on you, uh, you know, responding, you know, uh, eye for an eye, two for a new, whatever that's called, you know, I'm going to get you back for whatever you did to me. I mean, that is not the way we do as Christians. In fact, when somebody does us wrong, we serve them that much more. Because it's a part of putting the flesh under. That's how we maintain and operate in that liberty, that freedom by which Christ has set us free. Now, check this out. Not only through love do we serve one another, but serving others should be done through loving one another. So the reason why we serve, whether it be in church or either why we serve our spouse, whether we serve in, in our job places or whatever, is not because we're trying to get ahead, we're trying to be successful and walk all over everybody that comes across our path. No, the reason why we serve is simply because of this. We love each other. We love one another. Now, whenever it comes, if you serve in the children's ministry and it's hard for you to serve in the ministry, uh, in the children's ministry, you have to make the decision, am I serving out of flesh or am I serving because I love the kids? Is it an opportunity for me to put the flesh under or am I just going to serve because I love the kids? Amen. Whether you're on the worship team or whether you're an usher, it's a matter of making a decision. When I serve in God's house, when I serve in the church, I'm doing it because I love people and I love Jesus. That's it. Hallelujah. Look at your number and say, that's it. There's no, there's no other strings attached to it. Now, this is what happens. There's a lot of people, including myself. I'm in this boat too. There's times that you don't feel like serving. And that's an opportunity for the flesh to come in. That's whenever you make the decision. No, the whole reason why I'm serving is because God put this in me. This is my call. This is my destiny. This is who I am to serve other people. And so if I don't want to serve others and I don't want to take part in what God's doing, then it's, it's really selfish of me to think that way. So if, I, if I'm going to live in this liberty and make this choice to be a Christian and not only just be glad and trying to keep myself clean before I go to heaven, but I'm going to do something more than that, I have to make the decision that I'm going to serve others because I love God and I love people. Period. Period. Amen. Now turn over to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Now check this out. How do we serve one another? I was meditating on this scripture a couple weeks ago, and um, it just really kind of bore in my spirit that I needed to share this with you guys. Matthew chapter 13, verse 31. This is a parable that Jesus was talking about when it comes to the kingdom of heaven. And I want to talk about how we serve one another. Matthew chapter 13, verse 31. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field which indeed is the least of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and rest in its branches. Now, let's break down these two verses today. Let's do like a little Bible study. How many want to do a little Bible study today? Let's break this down. Let's look at this. Look at verse number 31. Another parable he put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a Mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Look, look at this phrase, the kingdom of heaven. When you find in the Bible the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, or something, the same kind of verbiage, it basically means this, how God does things. So whenever we hear 
of these phrase, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Basically, what Jesus is saying specifically here is that this is how God does things. How many of you want to know what God, how God does things? I mean, I've done it myself, and it hasn't worked out very good. But how many know when you do it God's way, it is always going to work out great. It's always going to be successful. So I want to learn how to do it God's way, not my way. Amen? Now check this out. So the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. So if the kingdom of heaven is how God does things, and then he compares how God does things to a mustard seed. Now we know that a mustard seed is a small seed. We know and it creates a large tree. I want to go a little bit past that obviousness of it. But basically, whenever we find this word seed in the scripture, it actually represents life. Because there's power in a seed. There's life in a seed. So whenever this scripture was talking about what Jesus was saying, the kingdom of heaven or how God does things is like a seed. And we can go on and say this in a seed for us because he's given us his life. Not only have we been given life, but within that life, the life of Christ, God has given us gifts and talents. So within that seed, it contains giftings and talents. Some people encourage people. We'll talk about this in a second. Some people like to teach. My wife is an amazing teacher. There's times that I don't want to be taught. Amen. But she's going to still teach because that's her gifting. She's going to teach. Now, there's times that Miss Daphne just wants me to listen to her, but I'm trying to encourage her because I'm an encourager by nature. I'm like, girl, just suck it up. Let's go. Let's move forward. And she's like, no, I just want to talk about it for a second. And I'm like, no, let's go. And then there's times say, babe, I got this problem. And she goes, well, step one, you need to do this. And then step two, and then you'll go and figure it I'm like, Lord Jesus, I already know all that. Let's just do it. How many can, who can relate to my story here today? Because we all have different gifts and talents. There's some people that are quieter than others. You know, we were laughing um, up here on the stage, and uh, Miss, um, Miss Christina and Carissa, their personalities are loud by nature. Amen. And that's a good thing. They're loud people. How many know it's good to have worship leaders that are loud? Amen. Because the last thing you need is a worship leader. Hallelujah. I mean, because, you know, you'll only go as, you know, to their, you'll go under what their highest level is. Amen. So, I mean, that's just their personality. And that's what I love about Chris and Christina. You'll never have to guess what they're thinking. (laughs) <laughs> never, because they're going to say, it. that's their gift, that's their, their calling. Now, there's other people that are just really quiet, and they're checking you out the whole time before they, you really get to know them. Sarah's that quiet type. Sarah's, she, she's behind the scenes. She knows how to work really hard. She does amazing. She's an administrator. But to get her to grab a mic and get her to preach, uh-uh. It would be a very short service. She would say, Jesus is good. God is good. You need Jesus. Come get saved. And that would be the gist of her service. Well, her personal, God's given us all gifts and talents. And what was that? It was found in a seed. That seed represents life. Amen. It's a gift and a talent. These gifts and talents is what makes us who we are. God gave us that. So within this life, which came from salvation, is a seed, we can call life, which is a gift or a talent. Now notice something. Jesus goes on and talks about this in verse number 31. And Another parable he put forth, saying to them, the kingdom of heaven, how God does things, is like a mustard seed or his life, which a man took and sowed in his field. Now notice something is, a man took and sowed it. Basically, we are that men. We are, the, we are those people that takes the life of God and uses it. Takes the seed and plants it. So God has given us seeds, gifts, talents, so we can sow into other people's lives. That's what this is all talking about. It's not only just talking about faith and how your faith can be small and then grow into a huge tree. No, basically what Jesus was trying to get across is God gives us his life. Within that life is gifts and talents. And those gifts and talents aren't to be used just for you. Those gifts and talents are to be used for others around us, to serve others. Now, in Romans chapter 12, verse number 3, you, can, you don't have to turn there, or if you want to, you can. Romans chapter 12, verse number 3. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Look, you never say, it's not all about you. 
Find some else. It's not all about you. That's what Paul was saying here in verse number three. It was a grace that was given to him not to think highly of ourselves, but to, to think soberly. God has given us all a measure of faith. Verse four. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that's given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith, or ministry, or we could say service, let us use it in our ministering or in our serving. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who sows mercy with cheerfulness. See, he's going through this list of the different gifts and callings, these different gifts and talents that was given to them, given to us whenever we accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. It's a life that has been given to us. And that life within that seed is not just to be kept to ourselves. It must be sown into other people's lives. Notice what he went on and said this. He said this, and again, verse number 31, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took. And notice what he do? He sowed in his field. Let me say this. Sowing is serving. Sowing is serving. Now, there's been so many messages about sowing when it comes to finances, and all of that is true, and all that's good, but we have to take it deeper than I'm just trying to sow finances so I can reap finances. No, really, God's given us his life to sow into somebody else's life to reap a harvest in that life. If it seems like you're struggling in your relationships, begin to sow into other people's lives. If you're struggling in your finances, obviously begin to sow, and you'll see your finances change. But if, if you're so tied up to the way things have always been, and nothing seems to change, then stop doing what you've done and start sowing into other people's lives. Amen. Sowing is serving. Because notice what it says here. He sowed in his field. The seed is sown in a field. This field represents our day-to-day -day routines. When Jesus was talking about, I believe he was talking about, he's, he's talking about the life of God. This seed this is a gift and talents, and it's to be sown in our field, or we should be serving others on our day-to-day -day lives in a day-to-day -day routine. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I love to serve you. Find some restaurants and say, neighbor, I love to serve you. Do you believe that today? I mean, do you, do you honestly want to serve other people? Amen. I say, do you honestly want to serve one another? It's the love of God that's been poured in our hearts by the Holy Ghost that causes us to desire to serve one another. I look forward to serving others. Why? Because there's no greater gift than to give it than serving one another. Amen. Now, the reason why we're going this direction in our church is because it's so easy for whether it's our church or other churches to get self-centered. Come on, we're just going to minister to us four no more. We're just going to deal with all the problems that are in these four walls and just forget about everything else outside the four walls. The whole reason why we're going this direction is because there is people outside these four walls that need us. And I don't want to be so internalized as a pastor that we're just trying to put the, put the fires out all the time in church. You know, it, are there anybody here going to help me preach this today? I mean, we, we, we don't want to sit here and just be putting fires out all the time here. I mean, you know, there's other things that we need to do outside the four walls of this church. And it starts by choosing to serve one another. Again, look at your neighbor and say, I love to serve you. Look, look at your other neighbor and say, I love to serve you. There is gifts and talents that God has given to you on the inside of you that needs to be given out. Don't keep them to yourself. Give it out. Share. If you like to encourage, encourage. If you love to give, give. If you love to prophesy, prophesy. If you love to do all those things that he gave us at List in Romans, do it. If you love to serve, serve. It's a part of who you are in Christ. It's who God's called you to be. Sitting on your blessed assurance isn't going to get you successful as a believer. you got to get up and do something. you got to get up and say, I'm going to serve because I choose to love one another. I choose to love like Jesus loves. Amen. It's a choice that I make. It's a choice that you make. Man, just keeping to yourself is only going to create more and more darkness in your life. Nobody, God did not create anybody to stay by themselves. 
I mean, God wants us all to get outside of our comfort zones, get outside of what makes us feel secure and say, I just trust God. I'm just going to believe God. We're going to serve God because we love him and we love people. Turn over to Matthew chapter number 25. Now, put your finger there in Matthew chapter 13. Go over to Matthew chapter 25. You get anything today? Amen. We love to serve around here. Matthew chapter 25, verse 24. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. Now, before we go any further, think about what we just said, what Jesus said about the kingdom of, of, uh, kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, how he does things. He's basically saying it's found in the seed. Life is found in the seed. Well, it's the same way if, if a seed has our gifts and talents, then Jesus is explaining here, there is an example of those that were given talents. Or we could actually say it's actually he's sown into, this employer sown into their lives. Now check this out. Verse number 25, and I was afraid and went and hit your talent in the ground. Look there, you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant, you, have, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received back mine own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But, for who, but from whom? But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let, let me say this from this whole situation here. It is dangerous. It is a dangerous place to be when you choose not to serve. Because this, 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 this gentleman didn't do anything with the talent. He just gave it back. It's a dangerous place. In Jesus' fact, he was basically saying, throw this, throw this guy, or, or this example, he was saying, throw this guy um, out, basically. You wicked and lazy servant. Verse 26, you, have, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gathered where I have not got, scattered seed. You, and he goes on. Man, it's just for, for everyone who has, more will be given. and He has abundance. But for whom he does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And then the last one, cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. How many of you is a dark place to be when you don't serve? Oh, can I get a better amen than that? It's a dark place to be when you don't serve. Because that's what this is, this is what Jesus was trying to get across to believers. It's a dangerous place when you don't do anything with what God's given you. When you just keep it to yourself, it's a dangerous, dark place to be. I know, me, myself, I remember um, we were on staff at another church in Lubbock before we went over to my pastor's church, and uh, we went through a short season after being in that church and on staff serving and loving what we did, and we went through a short season, and we didn't serve a whole lot. Um, we just kind of sat back and just kind of fed a little bit and all that, and that was good for us at that time, but after a couple months of that, it seemed like darkness started coming around us more and more. And see, our finances wasn't near as good as it used to be. Um, our relationship, me and, me and Ms. Stephanie's relationship wasn't as strong as it was used to be. It's because we got further and further away from what God created us to be. More and more negative things, darkness started taking place in our lives that we, we were like, we have to serve. I remember going to, to my pastor's, I don't care where, put me anywhere. Put me anywhere, because it's getting dark. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, don't let it get dark. Man, don't let it get dark. Now turn back over to Matthew chapter 13, verse 31. Matthew chapter 13, look at verse 31. Again, another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sown in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and rest in its branches. Now, let's dissect this verse number 32. Notice this, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. Let me say this. Our lives may seem like we don't have a lot to offer, but that's all that God wants. It's just you to offer something, to give something, to do something. Amen. That's what basically, which is the least of these, it's comparing the mustard seed, the small seed. I mean, no, you have something to give. It might seem small to you, but you have something to give. Amen. I said it might seem small, but you have something to give. Amen. I'll, I'll say it again. You, have, you might have something small, but you have something to give. Amen. Now check this out. 
But when it is grown, it is greater. Greatness is on the inside of each and every one of us. Greatness just doesn't happen. It's got to grow. Notice this again. It says, but when it is grown, it is greater. The seed that God placed inside of you, those gifts and talents, the life of God on the inside of you is in you to cause greatness to come out of you. Not for you to call yourself great, no, but to help greatness help other people around you. You're called to greater things. And lastly, look at this. So the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. Inside of you and I, this seed is, is going to produce such a large tree that the birds of the air come. Greatness isn't for us to brag about. Greatness is for others to take part in. It's a great tree that is planted inside of us. It's just a seed right now. So greatness comes when you make the decision, I'm just going to serve others. I just choose to love on others. I choose to put my flesh under and serve. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Bow your heads. Father, I thank you so much for today. Lord, I thank you so much for what you're doing in our service, in our church. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would invade this place right now. Lord, I expect you to do great and mighty things in this place. Holy Spirit, move now in this place. I give you free reign to move like you want to move, to do what you want to do. Holy Spirit, I thank you for a church that loves to serve you, a church that loves to serve others. In the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, wherever you're sitting at, just lift your hands up and let's just thank him. Come on, just, where, just right where you're at. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the life of God on the inside of us. Hallelujah. Your voice is your address in the spirit realm. You, you can speak out loud in this church. You're not going to have an usher escort you out. You can, you can speak. You can pray. You can, you can lift your voice in this place. It's okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for moving in these services. Holy Spirit, you are amazing. Thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. Our eyes are open and we see and know all that you called us to do. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay. I just break any hindrance in this church from doing all that we're called to do. Satan, I just want you to know that you have no power You've been rendered powerless in this church. And I speak to you in freedom in this place. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Lord, let there be joy in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's do this. You guys are getting too comfortable. Stand to your feet. We're going to pray for a little while. And you know, it's, supposed to, it's good to be led by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of us, quickens our mortal bodies. We call our bodies alive. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There are some people, if we can dim the lights there, Chris, thank you, sir. If there's some people here today, you've been carrying a lot of burdens. You've been carrying a lot of just stuff. You just weighted down by stuff. And you know the scripture talks about how, you know, we're called to liberty, and you haven't been, you haven't been living in that liberty. I want to pray for you. So if that's you, you just been carrying some stuff, and you just need a dose from the Holy Ghost. I want you to come down front right now. You say, I'm just, I'm just, I'm ready. I'm ready to get prayed for. I need some of that. Hallelujah. Come on down. In the name of Jesus. Church, let's just pray. Father, I thank you for a dose of the Holy Ghost right now. People, hallelujah, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Thank you, Lord, for strength from heaven. Who else? Come on down. You've been carrying a lot of stuff today. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. If we can get the worship team to go up there and you guys just, just sing that last song. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right, just sing no other name. That'll be fine. Just do that. No other name. Hallelujah. Are you grateful that you're in the house of the Lord today? You know, before we can even get to a place to where we're, we can even accept the destiny of call, you got to lay aside weight. You can't, you can't carry weight. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. Is there anybody else? You can just say, hey, I need, I need a dose from the Holy Ghost. All right, let's do this. Grab somebody by the hands. Right now, we're going to begin to pray for one another. Jesus, we worship you. We are In the name of Jesus, I pray. Lord, I thank you. That in the name of Jesus, we pray for the person on our right and on the left. Holy Spirit, you do what you need to do in this place. Do what you need to do in this place. Move mightily, Lord. Move. Move according to your spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Now, now let's just lift up our hands and let's lift up our voices in this place. Hallelujah. Psalms 100. Talks about how we make a joyful shout unto the Lord. It's, I mean, we're not to be silent. The book of Acts is a perfect example of that. They were not quiet when they prayed. Hallelujah. We will not grow weary in well doing in this church. Hallelujah. We will not grow weary in well doing in this church. Come on, church, let's pray. Go and pray in the Holy Ghost. If you can pray in tongues, just pray. Church. Your begging brings the rain and drought. Your glory spins the earth around. And your whisper makes Thank your heart fall There's no other name. And there's no other name. Sing it. Come on, sing it out today. Like yours, Jesus, like yours, Jesus, there's no other name, there's no other name like yours, Jesus, like yours, Jesus. Revives the sick and lay. Your power wakes the dead again. And your love destroys the grip of sin. Oh, your love oh, destroys the grip of oh. sin. That's no other. And there's no other you, name The name that stands Through the ages There's no other name There's no other name Like yours, Jesus Like yours, Jesus Oh 
in this moment right here, right now, you might be thinking, okay, this is different than what we've always done. You know, it's almost time to leave. But I want you to know, in this moment, that's when miracles can take place in your life. When you make the decision right now to kind of unhook from what you're thinking about, unhook from what you're feeling, unhook from what your body's saying, unhook from what your mind is saying. Just say, I'm here. I'm in God's house. I'm going to get whatever He wants to give me today. I mean, how many is ready to receive more from God today? How many wants to receive more than you have before? You're just tired of being just being a Christian. You want more than that. Come on, lift up your hands right now. Come on, let's worship Him. All generations sing. And all generations will sing of your goodness. And all generations will know your name. Come on. Glory and honor. Yes, sir. Today, a glory and honor. You are the Lord. Will be your you are the Lord. A glory and honor we give to your name. So, there's no other name. There's no other name like you, Jesus. Like you, Jesus. Psalms chapter 107 verse number 33 he turns rivers turns water springs he turns the wilderness into pools of water dry land into water springs there he makes the hungry dwell that they may establish a city for his dwelling place and sow fields and plant vineyards that they may yield a fruitful harvest. He also blesses them and they multiply greatly and he does not let their cattle decrease. This land that he's talking about, I believe it's, a, it's got a spiritual connotation to it. I believe we are entering into a season, a time where the land in the spirit realm was wilderness now is turning into pools of water yes. Yes. I said now it's turning into pools of water yeah, there's well springs that's coming out of this church this church will be known as a church that is hungry for more of God yeah. the hunger that people have in this church is going to make people who are not hungry uncomfortable if, if you're not hungry, you will feel very uncomfortable in this church. But if you're hungry for more of God, 
I said, if you're hungry for more of God, you're at the right place. You're at the right church. This is the place for you. If you're hungry, there's a wall rising up inside of this church, turning the dry places into a well of living water. We're hungry for more, Lord. We're hungry for more. Oh, thank you, Lord. This is no other name. Say, there's no other name. There's no other name like yours, Jesus, like yours, Jesus. There's no other name, there's no other name like yours, Jesus, like yours, Jesus. Hallelujah. I refuse to be dry. I refuse to be dry. I refuse to live in a wilderness. No, there's wells rising up. There's a well rising up, springing forth. Don't want to have church as usual. Something, something's, something's boiling up. Boiling up. Verse 36, Psalms 107, verse 36, so big. There he makes the hungry dwell, that they may establish a city for their dwelling place. It's part of the visions of this church is that we establish people in the Word of God and the Spirit of God. I want you to know, I want you to know God's stirring up hunger. He's stirring up hunger inside of people. For more of him. You know, oh, I'm just going to say it. You know, so many churches all over the world try to pull people to get them to serve in church. It's like pulling and pulling and pulling and getting them to serve. And it's because there's gaps, because of all this kind of stuff. I mean, you know, let it not be in this church. I said, let it not be in this church. Let's serve because we love Jesus. Let's serve not because the preacher has to convince you to serve. Let's just serve because you love Jesus and you love others. And, and, and let me say this, and I'm, I'm just going to be, can I be bold today? If you're burned out, get over it. The, the only reason why you're burned out is not because of Jesus. It's not because of the church. It's nobody else. The only reason why people get burned out is because of them. Well, I'm afraid if I serve too much, I'll get burned out. No. If you love Jesus, can you ever get burned out of loving Jesus? I'll say, let me ask you a question. It's a simple yes, no answer. Can you ever burn out from loving Jesus? No. You're always going to love Jesus. So if you love Jesus, then it's natural for you to want to serve. Hallelujah. Think about what he's done for you. Think about what he's brought you through. Think about where he's put you. Think about what he's going to do. Think about what he's already done, what he's doing right now. That's why we serve. That's why we do what we do. That's why we love the way we love. That's why we do what we do in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Grab somebody by the hands. I just had to encourage you today. Y'all know that for me as a pastor, I, I'm just, I'm real. What you see is what you get. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's times in services, I know it's a holiday and things like that. And there's just times in services to where you just, you, you, you're plowing. How many, you don't have to hold hands anymore, sorry. Um, how many farmers here know how the difficulty of, of plowing can be? I mean, how many you just plow and you plow and you plow? Man, I, I feel your pain, bro. <laughs> There's times pastors just plow and plow and plow because they know that eventually they're going to see the harvest. And in services like this, that you just plow and you plow and plow. 
Because I, there's a harvest coming to us. I said there's a harvest coming to us. But l- let me say this. I refuse just to go through the motions in this church. I'm not going to do it. I said, I'm not going to do it. It would have been really easy for us just to shut this thing down at 11.45, go home and say, well, he preached a good message. Uh Uh-uh. Look at your neighbor and say, "Uh uh-uh. Well, it's the holidays, and you got this going on, and people are going to come to church tired, and they got this, and da 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 Uh Uh-uh. We're hungry for more God. I said, we're hungry for more God. I, I, I see the church full. I don't see them empty. Corner. I see I see God moving in this place. Hallelujah. God's changing us. God is transforming us. And I'm not going to be satisfied. We're not going to be satisfied with churches being just usual. A couple songs, good little message, take up the offering. Ra ra re, kick the devil in the knee and go home. No. We should never say, uh-uh. Find somebody say, uh-uh. But I, I, I'm going to say it one more time, and I'll be this by the Spirit of the living God. You guys know I don't usually do this like this, but I just, I just sense by the, the Spirit of God is talking to us as a church. If you're not hungry, you're going to be very uncomfortable in this church. I, I just, I hear that on the inside of me. But if you're hungry, this is the place for you to be. I said, this is the place for you to be. How many hungry people are in the house today? Are you hungry for more of God? Then this is your place to be. This is your place. But if you're if you're afraid, if you're if you're whatever it is, you're trying to find reasons why you don't want to serve anymore and all that kind of stuff, get right with Jesus. Amen. Let your neighbor say, get right with Jesus. I mean, he saved us, he delivered us, he set us free. Amen. Woo! Man, I almost got some of that Pentecostal stuff on me today, man. All right, now you can grab somebody by the hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we pray for the person on our right and on the left. We thank you for this day. Man. We'll be established, a city that's established where the hungry are at. So, Father, I thank you. That we're blessed coming in and blessed going out with a head and not to tell above and not beneath. We're overcomers. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We're people that walk by faith and not by sight. We always triumph through Christ Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over our lives, over this church, over everything that we come in contact with. And we decree and declare that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We submit ourselves to you, God. We resist the devil and he flees. So, Father, as we leave today, we choose to live life the way you want us to live. Serving you and serving others. As we leave today, we'll be the light in the darkness. We are transforming lives, changing the world. So we thank you, Father, right now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Won't you do this for me? Greet somebody before you head out. Me and Miss Stephanie will be at the door.